So our crow box has been sitting now um, so that all the cement can cure up. Um, it, the housing is almost fully assembled. Our rails are in place. The servo spine is installed. The whole basket's on the front. Everything's nice and strong now because of cement and the hot glue that we've used is set up. So now we're going to talk about installing the coin magazine, which is this uh, sort of odd box that we made earlier on. Um, there are a couple other parts we'll need. We'll need the sliding lid, also from earlier on. And from way earlier on, maybe I think the third or fourth step, the actual lid to the machine itself, um, which has this little um, rail of acrylic here that we call the perch fulcrum. We'll also need to take from our styrene sheet uh, a little piece of scrap that's at least as big as the, as the uh, footprint of the coin magazine. The size I have here is pretty good. It looks like it's about two by one and three quarter inches or so. So before we actually um, go installing the coin magazine, oh, sorry, and we'll need hot glue for this step, so it's a good idea to go ahead and get that gun heating up. Over on the side here is where I have mine. Now the first thing we'll do is install the mid lid of the machine, and uh, that's done with this uh, rail, or this uh, fulcrum, uh, sticking up out of the top of this piece of acrylic, and um, the um, rail fulcrum, or the, the, sorry, the perch fulcrum goes to the rear of the machine here. And the best way, I think, to install this is just to lower the lid so that these two tabs accept the, uh, these um, protrusions from the rails and then just tap everything down into place. There's four other places where it connects to uh, tabs to slots and then we have a nice lid for our machine. Of course in the end there'll be a perch also on top of this part but for now this is where we are. Um, and the coin magazine I should say is designed to be installed where the, air, the side that has this uh, arrow on it is um, oriented toward the uh, basket of the, at the front of the machine like like this so just sort of drops into that hole but we don't want to let go of it there's nothing there for it to install to yet so the way the coin magazine works is that it actually floats a short distance above the lid uh, the sliding lid in this case the lid that controls access to the food so we're going to install this um, sliding uh, lid temporarily right now so the way we do that is just feed it between these two tabs in the front of the uh, basket face, basket front window I should say, making sure that it's captured. And then just slide it on in on the rails. Not all the way in. You can lose it here. So I would just put it in, leave myself about an eighth of an inch over here. Now if we were to drop the coin magazine in we see that it actually rests on the sliding lid, but we don't want it to rest on the lid. We want it to float just a short uh, distance above um, the lid so that there's no friction. And the way we do that is we take this piece of, um, this is half millimeter thick styrene. Um, it's the same styrene that the panels of the ramps that we'll install later are made of. So uh, just find yourself a little scrap piece of this from um, uh, your styrene sheet and it should be just fine. And what we want to do is leaving that coin magazine in its spot, just lift it up, push the styrene under it. And again, this is just being used as a temporary spacer, the styrene. Uh, it's not going to stay in place. It's, um, it's just holding the uh, coin magazine one half millimeter above the sliding lid so that we can get it cemented into place. So before we apply the glue, it's a good idea to just sort of tap the magazine to the front of the machine. Now with, the, uh, with that coin magazine floating just a short distance above the lid, courtesy of our piece of scrap styrene here, um, we're going to hot glue it into place. Hot glue the coin magazine, that is. Um, and before we do that, we just want to make sure that... See, the coin magazine has a little bit of space to move in this hole here that's made for it. We just want to make sure it's pushed to the front of that... Um, to the front of that opening so that there's no gap here. Um, if there's any slack, we want it to, have to be on this side. The coins will just feed easier that way. Okay, we're going to uh, apply our hot glue here in a second. And the reason we use hot glue because the installation of the coin magazine ideally is temporary. Um, it's really only used in phase three of um, the uh, training protocol to dispense training coins each time the food lid opens and closes. Um, once we reach stage four, there's no need to provide training coins any longer and so um, using hot glue to attach the coin magazine makes it easier to remove when we've reached stage four. Um, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and attach it. So. Something to double check before we begin is to make sure that your sliding lid, which is this part here, uh, hasn't gone all the way into the machine like this because it'll make the front of it dip down. So you want to make sure that your sliding lid 
um, is resting on this front edge of the uh, crow box face here. Um, just a little bit, just so that the proper elevation is maintained the pro uh, that's to keep everything level. Um, and again, uh, we're going to apply some hot glue, and I'm probably going to knock this around a little bit, see how it can move. Probably end up knocking the coin magazine around a little bit um, during that time, so the last thing I want to do after the glue, the hot glue is applied before um, it starts to set up is make sure that it's positioned as far forward as it can be. Um, and I'll, I'll repeat that when it's time. So I'm just going to make sure my lid hasn't gone too far in the machine and that my styrene is tucked up nicely under the um, coin magazine and then I'm going to start laying down my hot glue here. Doesn't take a lot, but it's a good idea to get a seal here, just in terms of weatherproofing, weather tightening, I should say. So I just like to draw that bead around all four sides of the coin magazine, make sure the beads touch each other at the corners, just to get a nice consistent seal. That should be it for some, for the hot glue. Now I'm just going to make sure that without sticking my fingers into the hot glue, make sure that coin magazine is pushed forward. So that's all that can be done right now. Um, we're going to give this a couple minutes. Actually, I just saw an air bubble in my hot glue. Get out of there, you. Get that filled. Okay, so that's uh, it for now. Um, we're going to give this um, hot glue enough time for it to dry and set up, and then we'll continue. Okay, now that our hot glue has had time to cool, um, we're going to carefully remove the lid of the machine. And as you can see, now our coin magazine is actually part of the lid, which is what we want. This gives us a chance to remove our piece of scrap styrene here and uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually test the feeding of the um, coin magazine to make sure that it works properly and that there's no jams. Um, we want to do this manually first because the servo that we use to open and close this sliding lid is a pretty strong motor and if something jams um, along the way there's a chance that the servo could actually break something inside of our crow box so we're going to sort of do this by hand first. So What we need now is um, the rail upper the removable rail upper, which I chose to put on this side, might be on your side, on this side on your crow box. Doesn't matter which. Um, it is important that you notice that there's a notch in this, and the notch goes to the rear of the machine. So I'm just going to set that there for now. You get a, a pair of um, eight millimeter M3 machine screws and nuts and uh, install this rail upper so that we can make sure that the sliding lid stays in its rail as well as it's supposed to. Um, and my driver doesn't actually fit in this opening so I tend to do this by hand just with the just the driver bit. Um, doesn't matter which side is the screw side or the nut side, just whatever works best for you. So I'm going to put this through here, thread this nut on just a little There, and then do the second one, and then I'll tighten them both up. So when I do the tightening, I like to hold the rail in place with my thumb like this, just down, uh, just to make sure that the, um, the action of turning this bolt doesn't lift the rail out of its track. And I'll do the same back here. There. So now with that rail installed, our sliding lid can move around in here. So I'm going to park it back like this. Actually, let's park it forward. We'll put the lid of the machine back on. And I'm going to put some coins into the coin magazine now. We're going to try to feed them out. So I'm going to move this to here. I made this little paper tube which makes loading uh, the round coins into the square hole quite a bit easier. Just sort of drops down like this inside. And I can 
just drop my quarters in and they'll all land flat in the coin magazine. If you try to load the coin magazine without this, um, you could run into a bit of trouble um, because the coins can bounce and get caught diagonally in there. But with a, a simple paper tube like this, it's no problem to load those in. And I made that paper tube by cutting out one of these um, these rectangles here from just regular old printer paper and taping it together so that it's in a circle. And these are available, This sorry, a PDF of this um, sheet here is available on the Crowbox website. So if you want to download those. But now with my coins in there, I can just remove the paper tube. And now we can try cycling to make sure that uh, this can feed coins. So I'm just going to put my finger into this slot on the door, sliding lid, and move it in. And back, and forward again. And in this case, my, my coins are feeding just fine. So um, I can feel pretty confident that um, when this is powered by a strong servo motor, that it's going to feed coins instead of jamming. So I think it's safe for me to continue with the next step. So after making a bunch of crow boxes, um, most of them, um, while building um, this set of how-to videos, um, I've discovered that it's possible to end up with a, um, a coin magazine assembly which can jam. And uh, I believe this is due to small variations in the thickness of the acrylic that's used since um, it's not actually precision manufactured. It's pretty much exactly three millimeters thick, but from time to time um, you'll get a sheet that's a little more or a little less. Um, and uh, so that can cause a jam when you're using quarters as I am in this case. So I'm going to demonstrate first what a jam looks like and then uh, we'll talk about how to fix it because the fix is pretty simple. So you may remember when we used uh, our hand to manually feed coins out of here. Um, we're going to do that again and I'm just going to cycle this until I see a coin jam and then we'll talk about how to fix it. So we're just delivering coins here. Okay, now we have a jam. So um, it's possible that the Crowbox servo will be strong enough to pull this back through the jam and then cycle forward again. It's probably even likely, but it would be better if it didn't jam at all. So we have another jam here. You can see that uh, the lid doesn't want to go all the way back because um, there are two coins jammed in here um, under the uh, above the coin pushers. So again, the servo would probably be able to muscle through that. It'd probably be able to muscle through like that. But um, I, think we'd, I think we'd all prefer if it just worked smoothly. So let's talk about how to solve that. So what I need to do here is take off the lid of the machine with the coin magazine attached. And uh, I'm going to dump out all these coins and collect all of these because I'll need, them, I'll need them to test with afterwards. So the uh, main reason for the jam is that, uh, and this is the back of the coin magazine here, so you can imagine the coin pushers coming back and then moving forward again, uh, is that the height of this opening here can be a little too large, um, sometimes depending on the thickness of the parts you get for the sheets from which you cut these two parts out, the uh, feet of the coin magazine. Um, but the solution's pretty simple. We're just going to bulk up um, this small part right here. We're going to add to that, make it a little thicker. And the way that I do that, the easiest way is to salvage some of this half millimeter styrene from uh, the sheet that we use for all the other parts of the crow box that are styrene. And we're just going to cement it here. So I'm going to take some scissors and trim this down. And I just want to make sure, I want to get a piece that fits it right in there. About the right size is good enough, it doesn't have to be perfect but uh, you want it to be pretty close to the size that can fit right in that space. So I'm just going to continue trimming here. Almost there. Getting closer. As you can see I'm being kind of uh, perfectionist about this. I'd like the best possible fit. See, now let's just get out of hand. There we go. That would fit. So I'm going to trim this down a little more because 
we really want, only want to cover uh, this actual rectangular section here. So uh, I'm going to use a small piece like that. So I'll get my cement here. So I'm going to put a bead of cement directly onto the back of the coin magazine there. Just a little bit will do. And then I'm going to press my little repair piece into place, my little patch. Spread that cement around a little bit first. Get this pushed in. Then I'm going to clear off any spilled cement right away because I don't want to risk making uh, any of these parts thicker, changing their shape or size. Um, and then I'm going to put my finger in the coin magazine and push this backwards just like that because it's really difficult to trim inside here but this excess on the back will be easy to trim away so I'm just going to press that into place here okay and we just need to let that dry down for a little bit give that 20 or 30 minutes I'd say 15 might do just so that it's uh, got enough adhesion there that we can uh, trim away this little tail this little tail tag that we don't need Okay, this has had about 15 minutes now to dry down, and I'm pretty confident we can move on with trimming it. So I'm going to take my trusty uh, hobby knife here, and just uh, gently cut through this styrene, following the contours of the back of the magazine. But now, as you can see, we've added a little uh, half millimeter strip of styrene to the uh, coin magazine there. Um, and that'll give a little bit, uh, it'll narrow this opening a little bit so that we can't pull um, a stack of two coins backwards at the same time. Um, so now uh, let's get some uh, coins together here and we'll test this out. Okay, so now we have our repaired coin magazine loaded into the machine with some coins. And uh, we're going to do that manual cycling of the, of the sliding lid. And see that, uh, just keep feeding coins out. No reverse jams. Let's get some out of the way. And we'll just keep going until we empty the whole coin magazine. There we go. Good to the last coin there. So uh, yeah, that should take care of any jam problems you have. Um, if your machine is still jamming for some reason, um, I would think we have a different problem and maybe um, come take a look at the Crowbox uh, Google group and uh, we'll give you a hand.